This Welcome everybody. Will now be and, recorded. and there we go. So we do have a uh, a, a visitor to us, a, a new member of our crew. Um, would you like to introduce uh, Dave to us? Oh, sorry, I'm just getting a little little garbled. I'd like me to introduce myself, and certainly happy to, sir. So I'm yeah, I'm Dave McLagan, who's with the uh, Orange before the uh, transition, and now the detachment, command, detachment manager, rather, is a new role, uh, staff sergeant here with the Orangeville detachment. So I've just asked, uh, I'm familiar with the Orangeville meetings, but I haven't sat in before on the, the other uh, townships in the county. I just wanted to hope to uh, be a fly on the wall, watching meetings and anything that uh, I can certainly do to help and or just kind of understand some of your processes from my end. So I'll be the quiet uh, one on the side of the, the video here and, and watch uh, Sergeant Randall uh, do her uh, great work. Well, you're, you're welcome to ask questions at any time, and uh, we we run a little bit uh, more informally here, so uh, um, but we still get the work done. Okay, uh, Staff uh, Superintendent, our chief here. Okay, do we have any declarations of uh, conflict or pecuniary interest today? No. Okay, hearing none, moving on. Um, we have no public here, so there's no public uh, question period today. Um, the agenda, has everybody had a copy of the agenda? Are there any additions to the agenda other than new business that you wish to bring up? Okay, can I have a motion for the approval of the agenda as written? Aye. Aye. Motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, we have the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on September 16th. Um, any uh, additions or deletions to those minutes? Kevin? No. No. Okay, a motion to approve the uh, the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion seven, seconded by Creelman. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay. So, uh, matters arising out of those minutes, really, there's just some status updates. Uh, so, maybe, uh, Deputy Mayor, you can fill us in on what's been going on with respect to the uh, parking and the speed zones and the uh, uh, higher fines initiatives. Okay, thank you. Um, we have passed a, a, a bylaw. Uh, to create a parking prohibition on the first line in the vicinity of Canning's Falls, or sometimes known as Scott's Falls. Um, we are also looking at the possibility of a parking prohibition uh, on the uh, third line uh, nearest the entrance to the uh, Parks Ontario uh, parking lot. Um, this is a, an absolute horror show on, on weekends with cars parked on both sides of the road uh, to the detriment of uh, people attempting to uh, to drive through and to the complete detriment of farm equipment trying to to make it up that road um, what i've suggested to council in my notice of motion is that we investigate which of the two sides or if necessary both sides um, and distance from the um, entrance to the parking lot should be uh, considered and signed. And I've also suggested that we appoint uh, provincial um, offense officers uh, to, to do the enforcement, because I think it's important that we not put any more pressure on the, uh, on the OPP to, to enforce parking. It's something that can easily be done by uh, sworn uh, provincial offense officers uh, who are trained and able to hand out part one certificates so that hopefully will be part of a staff report that we'll be getting either at our next meeting or the meeting after that um feel free to jump in with any questions um there has also been a reduction in the uh, speed limit uh, on hockley valley road in the approaches to uh, airport road something that the residents have wanted for years and uh, uh, the reaction has been uh, extraordinarily positive uh, to that. 
Um, it uh, makes it consistent with other county roads where the uh, the reduction in, in speed occurred years ago and, and no one really raised an eyebrow. Uh, and in this particular area, as, as everyone knows, there's uh, blind curves and uh, multiple driveways uh, and people were literally fearful for being able to get in and get out of their their own uh, their own driveway. Um, I don't know whether um, Nikki has something or anything to report on on enforcement of that new speed limit, um, but uh, I, I think it's been it's been widely um, uh, widely welcomed, uh, but not at, at least initially by uh, county staff. And then finally, the initiative of uh, the um, uh, town to uh, see higher basic fines for speeding offenses. Um, province still hasn't gotten back to us, still seems to regard this as some kind of increase in taxation, which it clearly is not. Uh, these are um, uh, fines that have remain, remained untouched for probably over 30 years. Uh, no one seems to know actually when the last time some of these fines were increased. Um, but uh, the town of Mono has requested that those be uh, considered for uh, an increase uh, as a signal to speeders. And we all know we have problems with speeders. Are there any questions about any of those items? John, you were mentioning on the on the first day about the parking enforcement uh, on third line uh, are these people hired on a per occasion basis or what, what's the how does that work just so i understand well, the... we, there's a couple of things we could do we could we could uh, we currently have a bylaw that allows us to uh, to appoint a, a provincial offenses officer uh, and uh, actually multiple uh, provincial offense officers and they, they traditionally enforce bylaws uh, and we have uh, a single individual currently appointed. Um, so the the, the legislation, uh, uh, municipal legislation, as it were, is is there, and we're able to do it without much difficulty. And one obvious thing to do would be to um, uh, train and, and deputize uh, some of the roads uh, uh, crews, and specifically the ones who do the uh, the, the, the patrols. Uh, to be able to hand out tickets as required. Um, the other possibility is that we find um, uh, two or three individuals who are prepared to do this on weekends uh, in return for um, remuneration. Um, I'm sure that within an hour they would probably pay for themselves, if not faster than that. But again, um, this is a little bit like the, uh, the so-called Green Hornets in the city of Toronto as distinct from uh, sworn officers. I don't know how Nikki feels about that, but it struck me as being the um, most expeditious way of, of approaching this issue. So Grand Valley did the same thing as I think you're talking about with your uh, someone from the town who's already employed. Neil Cowan was just trained and uh, appointed as a provincial offenses officer and he's been uh, doing parking enforcement in Grand Valley very very helpful for us because he's there all the time uh so we definitely would welcome that and um uh, in regard to i just go back to hockley road larry did concentrate on hockley road uh in the new speed zone quite a bit when it was first uh, reduced and i was looking just looking for his email but i'm not on my own computer so i i have it correctly i think in the first day he laid five charges in that area and spent quite a bit of time down there in the first couple of weeks uh, so that's what I have for you. Oh, that's great. If, if I, I just, just add, add hmm. go ahead. Go ahead, Sorry. finish up. I was just going to add one more uh, uh, item in terms of uh, status updates. Uh, it seems as if the provincial offense courts are, are getting off to an extremely uh, slow, creaky start. Um, and as a consequence of that, uh, our POA revenue, which of course uh, arguably goes back into uh, support of our police budget, uh, is projected to be down by about $100,000 this year. Um, my hope was that uh, through innovation, the courts would get up and, and uh, running 
uh, faster, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, the only thing they seem to be doing now are taking um, pleas uh, uh, remotely. Uh, they, th there don't appear to be any trials. I could be wrong in that regard, um, but uh, the the whole collection of, of uh, fine revenue has slowed to a, a snail's pace. Okay, thanks for that, John. Just a comment on the uh, the third line issue. Um, I did a for a couple of years. I did an event there, the Chase the Coyote, which is a a, a running uh, event uh, that takes place on a Sunday, I believe, and it's usually over by eleven o'clock. But um, I, I took care of the parking for that, including parkway. But just to give you an idea, there's 110 will fit into that MNR parking lot if you jam them in. Uh, very precisely. But in addition to that, we had another 185 vehicles that were parked on either side of the road. But if it's managed properly, which we did, because we had like three guys out there and, and got the cars to go well off to the side of the road, you could very easily get uh, you know, corn binders and those types of things up and down the road. But it's too much work and you can't do that every weekend. So you could potentially be looking at uh, some uh, heavy revenue if you had uh, uh, you know, no parking on both sides within the areas uh, south and north of the uh, the parking lot uh, and uh, on on both sides of the road. It's it's not good, and the uh, the ditches are deep as well, so it's not really a safe place to to have on street parking. We have been in touch with the uh, the MPP as well as the um, parks uh, uh, warden or or superintendent and believe that they will be attending a council meeting to discuss this. Uh, there's no question that that parking lot is, is no longer um, serving an adequate purpose. I'm also hearing about problems down in the, uh, in the vicinity of the Hockley uh, uh, Valley Nature Reserve um, and specifically parking on uh, Hockley Road. Uh, there is a, um, a county bylaw in place there, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm not certain whether anyone ever gets any tickets down there. And again, uh, I think the solution is probably provincial offence officers. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thanks for the updates uh, on that, uh, John. Um, next item is uh, number nine, which is the 2021 budget. Uh, and I think the, the preliminary budget's already gone forward to council, has it not, uh, John? Uh, it has, and uh, it's in the process of being uh, sliced and diced. Right. So really, there's there's no change for us. Uh, the only big change for us is that we don't have in our budget request this year the the uh, the extra funding for the uh, the pay duties because that's been uh, uh, that's been folded into our 1.25 FTE numbers. So uh, really, there's 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 no additional request uh, budget request that would be coming from our uh, our uh, services board to the to the town. Agreed. Yes, it's it's all part of the uh, of the the overall budget now, as I understand it. Yep. Okay. Um, false alarm report, Shay. Hi everyone again. Okay, so um, as of the end of September, we have a total of 80 false alarms. Uh, 67 first offense letters have been sent to the property owners as of the end of September. We had 11 second offense letters to date have been sent. Uh, last meeting, I reported that one third false alarm letter was to be sent. Um, however, after discussion with Mark Early, because two of the false alarms had happened within days of each other, just thought it was best to send both of those alarms as one notice. Therefore, the third false alarm didn't count. Um, so that invoice letter was not sent. So that puts us right now that we have not had any third false alarms. Um, and the difference between the two, because 80 total plus the letter sent, there was two false alarms this year that didn't have accurate addresses and we weren't able to go back and track where they went. 
Um, and I just want to note that August, we had 18, there was 18 false alarms in August, which seemed to be the most for this year so far, but then only three in September. So hopefully people are getting the hint. That's it. I can't hear you, Mike. I guess I'd better turn my microphone back on <laughs> using proper protocols. Um, yes, any questions for Rache on the alarm report? Okay, motion to accept the alarm report. Freelman and Evans, all in favor? Opposed, carried. McLagan, do you want to vote on that one too? I'm good. Thanks, Mike. We're good. Uh, um, community policing committee. Uh, we don't have Ann with us, so we'll uh, table that. I don't imagine anything's happening anyway with respect to uh, our uh, community policing subcommittee. Uh, our joint police board meeting was held uh, a couple weeks ago with uh, our hosts, uh, Melanchthon, and uh, it was a pretty good session. I found uh, both. Uh, uh, member Evans and Creelman were were uh, in attendance on online for it. Uh, had a good, uh, a really good presentation from our uh, solicitor general rep, and uh, uh, presentations from the uh, mental health side. And uh, it was overall, it was uh, very impressive. I thought. Any comments from the uh, board? Uh, I found it very, very informative uh, the presentation. So it was good for me anyway, as a as a newbie. Very useful. Good. Uh, flowing out of that, the, the next item I had was uh, board protocols because we did discuss that at the um, at that meeting because uh, Melanchthon does have a very uh, comprehensive set of board protocols. Uh, I have discussed this uh, uh, with uh, Shay and, and uh, Mark Early, and uh, we don't believe at this time that we're going to be pursuing developing. Uh, similar items uh, pending the uh, potential changes to the uh, police board statuses within Dufferin County. So uh, we'll just uh, hold on to that for, for now. Uh, our, our, our general uh, uh, council operating uh, procedures and, and uh, bylaws cover most of the items in, in any event. Any comments then on uh, that? It makes sense. I saw the note from Mark and uh, Shay as well, so. Okay, very good. Okay, over to uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Randall for the OPP oral report. Okay, does everybody have a copy? I'm, I have it online. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. All right, so I'm gonna oh. report for you on the period uh, uh, Q3, July to September, 2020. Uh, this will be when we came out of uh, stage three and uh, back into stage two, I think, or just barely back into stage two. Um, so there was, during that period, there was a, uh, a PSP on police services board, or not police services board, professional standards branch, which has changed its name to something that's about seven words long, and I don't know what it is. Um, there was two complaints, one under policy and one under conduct. And uh, the complaints were resolved uh, informally. In regard to secondary employment, we still just have the one uh, volunteer firefighter. There's no one else so far that has uh, requested uh, secondary employment. Um, I'm not sure if Dave knows of anybody in Orangeville, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but I don't think there's anybody here in Orangeville either. Um, during the period that we're uh, discussing, there was no transfers and no promotions. Uh, we moving on to detachment initiatives. We had uh, for this period the July long weekend campaign, the Civic Holiday Weekend, and the Labor Day campaign. Um, the results for July were uh, pretty good. Um, the Civic Holiday Weekend, uh, typical August weekend. We had a lot more traffic on the way through to the beaches, of course, as we know that nobody is uh, going out of country, or very few people are going out of country. And uh, Labor Day weekend, also very busy. Labor Day was uh, with, I think, um, some 
activity at Wasega Beach, like a boat or a marina activity at Wasega Beach. So we had a few members deployed up there, but uh, uh, any traffic going through was your typical holiday weekend traffic here. Um, public education campaigns, we had ongoing information regarding COVID and the uh, reopening of Ontario Act and the enforcement or whatever enforcement uh, looked like and what just trying to use an education and form an educated approach rather than uh, actual laying of tickets. And I think still to date we have laid less than 10 uh, charges under the ROE and I think uh, well, the majority of those for one, were for one event uh, where they were earned by the people who are in attendance. And um, then the traffic safety campaigns, obviously, that go hand in hand with the July, August, and uh, September long weekend campaigns. In regard to de de detachment emergency planning activities, we of course had our ongoing uh, pandemic plan activated. It's still activated now. Um, Caledonia uh, became active again during that time period. So. Initially, it was a uh, rapid deployment officer situation, and now um, Caledonia has settled into a pattern of uh, uh, five officers from the region are deployed for a seven-day period. At the end of seven days, another five are deployed, and it's usually four constables and one sergeant. Uh, we in Dufferin have given, given an exemption from that just simply due to the amalgamation. Uh, the continuity of operations plan was completed in the summertime and the tabletop exercise we did in August and the exercise went without any issues. Is there any questions on the first part of the report? All right, so we'll move on to, let me go tell us. Right, can you hear the people in the background or is it okay? Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, we've got some contractors outside the office. So. Oh, you're in Oakville. Sorry, this is. Okay, so we'll move on to the, uh, the RMS report. Um, so, under violent crime, you can see we're still on trend for 2020 uh, with um, very few. Uh, sex assaults or that kind of thing, but we do have the uh, we did have an increase in assaults over the summer. And um, uh, truthfully, I haven't had a chance to analyze these, but I don't suspect that they're any different from what we're uh, normally experiencing in the assaults related to domestic uh, incidents. Um, other crimes against a person, those of course are uh, are uh, threatening and that kind of an offense. So we had four in the third quarter for 2020, where we had uh, none in 2019. So we're for violent uh, offenses, we're kind of on par with where we were last year. So what that means to me is we picked up quite a bit uh, when we were into stage two and stage three, because we know there wasn't much happening during stage one. Um, in regard to the property crimes, you can see uh, some, some really good numbers there. And uh, I'd like to take credit for it, but I'll blame it on COVID. We still have a reduction in break and enters from 10 for the first three quarters in 2019 down to three in 2020. Uh, theft overs are zero for the, the third quarter and zero for the year. And um, sorry, that was theft overs. And then theft unders of uh, about half of what they were last year, also very good. And uh, But what we do see a bit of an increase in it is still worrisome is the frauds. And it is a continuation of the cyber crimes that we're seeing, the Bitcoin frauds, the Kijiji, online sale frauds and that kind of uh, thing. So I think uh, the answer to that is just to ramp up the education uh, to the community and find ways to reach out to people who don't use conventional conventional media. Um, and then the mischiefs are down by half as well. Um, in regard to the drug crime, there has been no charges. Uh, and we also know that uh, Dave would I think you would get it too that RMS is not up to date still with the from the updates from 2018. So our uniform crime reporting still does not reflect the new um, decriminalization of marijuana. So the offenses that we that we'll capture on here are usually only um, the possession charges that we would uh, lay under the old um, or under anything that we would lay that's not related to the new act or driving offenses. Any questions so far? 
All right. Okay. So then we'll go to our clearance rates and uh, violent crime clearance rate 84.6, which is pretty much typical. Usually we're about 100% because we know who, uh, who committed the offense. So uh, if I had had a chance to look into it, I could probably tell you that it was somebody who declined to lay a charge. And we know that if they declined to lay a charge, we're not able to clear it. Um, a property crime, 20% uh, clearance rate, uh, whereas last year we were at 33%. In regard to the unfounded occurrences, there's been none uh, for the first three quarters of 2020. So that's good. That's uh, showing that we're, we're using properly the unfounded status uh, and the, uh, the new clearance codes that help us eliminate the unfounded calls. In regard to the criminal record checks, you can see, of course, a drastic reduction for the first three quarters of the year, but I can tell you that's turned around the other way, and uh, our staff are working feverishly to uh, clear criminal record check requests and vulnerable service, vulnerable sector checks uh, for everybody who's gone back to work or gone back to school or needs the checks. And also, um, while I'm talking about criminal record checks, I'll talk about what happened to the online system. The online system fell apart in um, late September, uh, the last week, I think before uh, before the Orangeville folks joined us, we got notice from uh, headquarters that as of, we got notice on Thursday that as of Monday, we'd be doing all the criminal record checks back at the detachment and um, that we had to do the clear the backlog for our detachment. So uh, at that time, we weren't in too bad a shape. We were about behind by about 84. So it, it took us just a, li a little while to catch up. And uh, but now that we have Orangeville with us, it's been quite a shock to the system for uh, the Primrose ladies, and uh, we're working through that now. So, um, but I was informed yesterday that the online uh, criminal record check system is still a project, it's still a goal for the OPP, they just don't know when it's going to go live. So, based on what they told us in 2018 that it was going to come in 2019, I'm going to say it's going to come in 2022. So I don't have that much hope that it's going to happen anytime too soon. Any questions about the criminal record checks? No, nope. all good. Was that? You just mentioned all, all good. good. One thing we may, 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 we, we may want to mention, if you do live closer to Orangeville, you are able to access a new Orangeville detachment. So if you happen to be, let's just say on Purple Hill or the side of town, you can come to the Orangeville detachment for those. Uh, and then eventually we get to the point where the criminal record check system is online. The Those that are unfortunately have to do fingerprints can again come to this location. So there's a convenience hopefully for the citizens right outside of Orangeville. Good. If you need an ident, ident guy to come and take the prints, I'm available. If you need an ident guy. So you're volunteering services? Love it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you set up on the live scan. <laughs> No, I'm a member of the Ontario Public Service. All right. And on that, what, uh, in addition to what Dave said, we have only one live scan now. Orangeville had their own, and we had our own. But uh, since we've amalgamated, uh, OP, the live scan that was here in Orangeville is not supported in the OPP, so we're down to one. We're trying to make a case to get another one, but in the interim, the live scan from Primrose will be brought down here to Orangeville so that it's closer to the courthouse so that people can come to this office and have their prints done. So if you do get a vulnerable sector hit that you need fingerprints for, if you're living up in Mulner or Melanchthon or the north end of Mulner, you're gonna to have to come to Orangeville to get those prints done. So we will message that out. Once the move's made, we'll message it out to the community. So ready to go ahead? Go ahead. We have, in my package, I have Matkowski's numbers next. Yeah? Yeah, cool. Okay, so the overall, uh, the first page is the overall um, for this year. And uh, Larry's been working a lot. And as we mentioned before, he took over for um, uh, for Romaniac. But this, uh, Romaniac quit in September. So this is up to date for both of them. And then from October, for October, November, and December, Larry is working full time and we'll, uh, we'll gather the stats from the other person. So what you'll see is Larry's stats again will, will increase again, but the other person that we assign will only be responsible for 10 hours a week. So we're still figuring out how we're gonna to gather those stats and report back on those stats for you. 
I did reach out to um, the, uh, the academy to find out if there's any part-time officers that are interested in coming this way. And uh, um, Sergeant um, uh, Harris told me that she would check, but I haven't heard back from her since. So I'll check back with her again uh, and find out what we can do. Uh, but in the interim, until we do get somebody hired, it'll be somebody from Platoon that's assigned uh, once a week, one shift a week to work in Mono and report back. So you'll be uh, receiving the service that, you're, that you've asked for with your uh, enhancement. So as far as uh, Larry's numbers go, he, he did a really good job over the summer, really busy. A uh, lot of stunt driving charges. Uh, and I think he made it a personal mission to get every stunt driver that he could while he was on the road. And uh, he's routinely pulling in two or three a day. And not just on the airport road, but like he's gotten them on Highway 10, he's got them on uh, on Center Road, uh, on any of the lines, you know, more on the paved lines. And um, so he's doing his part, but I don't know what the answer is to the stunt drivers, you know, short of, uh, you know, physical uh, speed, uh, what do you call those, common traffic calming devices? I don't know what the answer is. Um, as far as uh, the other... The other calls for service, uh, he is he has done a lot of calls for service uh, for us because he's been out in Mono and we've had a, a high call volume in Mono. But uh, usually what Larry does is, and you guys understand that he is, uh, if it's a code zero call, a priority zero call, he goes, he triages, and then he goes back out on patrol. The uh, next graph, the first graph that I have is just a 2020 to 2019 comparison. and. Um, He's down a little bit uh, year over year from where he was in 2019, but we attribute that to March. You can see, for example, in March 2019, he had 240 offenses notices, where in 2020, he only had 88. And, um, and going forward, he, he picked it back up in April, and then uh, May and June, it was uh, not that many, but back up into triple digits for July, August, and September, October uh or september and um so he's, he's catching back up i suspect by the end of the year that he'll be even to where he was last year and then uh the third one is the uh, year over year uh for the last three years and um so he he's on par to catch up to 2018 but i'm not sure that he'll catch up to 2019 so but is there any any questions on that so far Nope. And I good. thought that I had the uh, Romaniac's numbers here, uh, and I didn't, and I apologize for that. I uh, must have been thinking that I was reporting after he quit. So um, what I can do is I'll grab his numbers and I'll send them out to Cheyenne and she can distribute them to you. Okay? Perfect. Question, Jack. I, I don't know if this is uh, I don't know if this is an appropriate uh, moment, but a number of uh, I wouldn't call them new hot spots have been uh, reported to me that maybe uh, we could we could look at. And I'm being careful here not to get into operational matters, but um, I had a fairly serious complaint from somebody who. Uh, was uh, speaking to the issue of, of bikes and bikers con uh, congregating at the um, Hockley Valley store and traveling down Hockley Road. It seems to be a, 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 an event that occurs uh, on weekends and uh, somebody claims to have seen um, a, a rifle uh, in the wardrobe of one of these individuals now this is a third hand at best uh, but i thought i'd pass that along but it does raise an interesting question because that is a a border with a nautilusaga detachment is there any possibility of uh, dufferin and nautilusaga working together uh, to um, uh, monitor uh, that area and uh, do do some enforcement with regard to uh, to bikes uh, well, yeah, next year when the motorcycles come back, we can work with Nottawa Sog on yeah. it for sure. Um, I, I know there, there's probably, I heard there's supposed to be a couple nice days this week, so we can uh, put the word out uh, with them again. 
but yeah, we work with Nato Osari, but quite often along the border there. And uh, we have had a few calls where we've uh, sent officers both from uh, Dufferin and Nato Osari over to the, the store and over to that, that intersection there and do the complaints. And we, uh, like we know, we've discussed a number of times that Hockley Road is a magnet for motorcycles and we know the loop that they do. Mm -hmm. So uh, we definitely will look at next year, uh, starting before the May long weekend. So we know that they often start before the May long weekend and, uh, and look at what we can do along the border there too. And we also can into integrate uh, the Central Region Traffic Team as well, right? Because they, they work free flowing between all of the detachments on the west side. And uh, we can uh, work in conjunction with the sergeants on the traffic management teams. Yeah, the other the other hot spot is also a, a, a potential collaboration between uh, Dufferin and Ottawa Saga, that being the uh, Mono Agila Town Line. Uh, that seems to be um, a shortcut for speeders uh, commuting uh, to and from uh, Point South. Um, and uh, I promised a resident that I would uh, bring that to your attention today. That it's it's getting worse. Yep, we can, uh, that'll be one of the roads where we can deploy the speed measuring camera out and get a good idea when and where to be there. Okay, well, that's great, the thank you. The camera's now because of the winter and we don't like that on the side of the road and have a plow take it out. So uh, we'll be bringing that back out probably late April. Okay. Okay, so we're, we're talking complaint. We also received a, uh, okay complaint from somebody on Starview Crescent about uh, vehicles driving fast on Starview. Um, speaking from experience, since I live at the corner of Starview and Brucedale, uh, they, they're not driving fast. It's a perception. Um, the speed limit's 40, some 50, but there, there's really no high-speed driving. And the, the woman alleges that she never sees an OPP car. Um, in the last two weeks, I've seen three on my street, and it's a dead end street. Uh, so there's really uh, she would have to be sitting on her front porch to know that uh, that there are no police cars driving in the neighborhood. So um, anyway, it's it, it's worth worth it for the guys to keep uh, driving on all the roads within Mono, which they're doing. And I think maybe some of the Orangeville guys get lost because they think Starview is still part is part of Orangeville. So we would we would accept that and we will allow them uh, free reign through our uh, little territory here yeah. and in our form behind. I would just continue to urge everyone to, to call us, right, and yes. make the report of it because it's always and you know it's the same as over on uh, some stuff that was happening on Beeline. I got the phone calls. First, I got the emails, and I'm like, no, I need the phone calls. You got to phone me and tell me. So, and the neighbors talked to one another, and then we started getting the phone calls, and then we could put together a, a, a reason to go down there with the speed camera. And we took it down, and then the, the uh, commercial motor vehicle team went down there, and, and uh, they're spending quite a bit of time there. So, oh, we lost Mike, or we lost, we gained somebody. Oh, the, the Chiefs here. Hail. Yeah. Good afternoon. So, uh, this just while we're on the issue of, of Starview and proximity to Orangeville, I should probably know the answer to this, but is it intended that there is to be a lot of interchangeability of, of, um, of officers between those working out of the, the Orangeville detachment versus the uh, Highway 89 detachment? In other words, are they going to be basically two two silos or will there be some back and forth there the reason i ask that is of course we now have uh, officers who are very familiar with our terrain and and uh, and roads um orangeville officers who've been uh, hired on by the opp may be less uh, familiar uh, but could probably be doing uh, excellent work in the south end in the subdivisions so yeah, we have had our uh, first NCO meeting last week or the week before, and that's where we discussed how we're going to deploy the officers and the, what our plan is going forward. We have started integrating the officers and started having the Orangeville 
officers go out uh, one at a time and get used to the, the terrain, so to speak, and to get used to the communities. And then we'll continue to integrate back and forth so that um, everybody knows, you know, where they're going and, and um, you know what the lay of the land is and what what uh, county roads not to go down in the winter time because you're not going to get back out and uh, all that stuff. So it's in the plan. It's just a slow process to integrate. And uh, we still have a lot of stuff happening in this building on sea lines. So, you know, but we have another NCO meeting coming up next week where we're gonna expand on what we started two weeks ago. Thank you. I just have one comment about the, uh, in the o, uh, OPP in Orangeville is uh, going in there to shop and things like that. I just noticed the uh, presence on the, on the streets uh, walking around, which is, uh, I think it's a good thing. So, uh, I just see more officers on the street uh, than I ever have. Uh, so, I, and I think that's a positive. So uh, that's just a little feedback on the Orangeville situation, so. Okay, uh, well, did that conclude your uh, report, uh, Inspector? Uh, did you wanna, you wanna finish up or? I, got, I have the MVCs and I have the provincial offenses notices and you already know the bad news about the provincial offenses notices. We finished the, the NBCs, yeah. Okay. All right. So I have. Yeah, uh, let's I just think... say hi to. The... Hello, Chief. To say say hi to the Chief Superintendent. Oh, I'm recognized as attending. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, the first one that I have, uh, the one that I'm looking at, is um, I should never print these every second page because then I get mixed up. The first one I'm looking at is. Uh, all of Dufferin County for the first three quarters of 2020. Uh, sorry, for the first three quarters of all five years. So what I'm demonstrating to you there is that we've had a decrease in overall collisions uh, over the years. This has been the, the lowest year so far for the first three quarters. We're down by uh, just over 50 collisions, and that's across so across the county and over the three quarters. So that's the good news. Um, the next one that I have is uh, a duplicate. I apologize for that. No, what is it? Oh, this is the one for Mono. So the next one that I have is uh, all the first three quarters of all five years for Mono. And the uh, overall reduction in 2020 is down six from uh, 2019. So 103 for the first three quarters of 2020. 2019 was 109. 2018 was 144 and 2017 was 118. So we're still on a, on a positive downward trajectory for crashes, which is always promising news. And then um, I don't have another one. Do you guys have only two? Only two. Only two, okay. So that's the good news uh, out of 2020 so far is that the crashes are still on a downward trajectory. And uh, we still continue to work on our, uh, our efforts to slow people down and to make people aware to watch for the, the deer. The deer is still a number, a high number of causation or some, almost always a primary causation up in the Northeast and Northwest. Uh, and of course, down in Hockley and, and uh, Air Force Road and all through the valley there. So um, the next one I'm gonna bring you to and the last one from the report is the provincial offenses notices. And uh, so what we have at the top is the part three numbers. And um, so last year at the end of September, we were at 388 for part three. And this year we're at, um, we're at 260. So we're down 128 uh, part three notices year over year. And then um, our numbers for part one at the end of September, we were at 1,923, and this year we're at 1,538. So we're down about 385 uh, provincial part one offenses notices over the year. So pretty pretty high number, but as we know, we had uh, very little traffic in the first part of COVID, and uh, traffic has definitely picked up uh, in the last like over the last three months. And you can even see in the numbers on the part one offenses notices for June. Uh, July, August, and September, they're more or on par with what they were in, in, uh, in 2019. Even May uh, is on par. So March, this is a significant reduction and April is a significant reduction uh, 
uh, from the year before. So um, we'll have to see going forward uh, how things turn out over the next uh, three three months of 2020, and then. Um, be interesting to see what 2021 looks like. But barring any questions, that's what I have for you. Any questions for the inspector on uh, the uh, OPP oral report? I have a motion to receive the uh, oral report. Evans, Creelman, all in favor? Opposed, carried. Uh, Chief Superintendent, do you uh, want to? Talk to us, give us some good news, give us advice, uh, tell us that you're dropping the chart, the, uh, the uh, hourly rates for the uh, officers. Uh. <laughs> well, I, would I, I, I really, uh, first of all, I, I again, I apologize for uh, being late to the uh, meeting. I was a little bit behind and then I had to uh, upload some of this technology uh, today, but it seems to be working well. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I appreciate um, uh getting some time on your agenda i i really just wanted to take a moment to uh introduce myself um uh for one uh i'm uh dwight pierre is my name and i i, I started as the uh, chief superintendent uh commanding central region uh january 6th and uh i was very pleased to get the spot but we quickly uh came into uh, covid and uh it was a kind of baptism under fire with the uh, health emergency and uh, I, I wish I had gotten out earlier to uh, meet with all the PSPs, but I have uh, taken the last two months of the year here and made a point of trying to get out and connect with everybody. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, kind of uh, outline the fact that uh, where regional headquarters fits into the mix as far as the OPP goes, um, our regional headquarters for Central Region is, is situated in Aurelia. But we're we're not general headquarters, and we're not the new uh, Aurelia detachment, which is presently under construction. Uh, we're situated on Highway 12, and um, what we have here is the central command <clears throat> for the region, and the region extends north from Caledon up to Huntsville, and from uh, Collingwood over to Northumberland. Uh, Brighton is is our farthest east, and up into the corner of Peterborough there as well, Peterborough County OPP. So it's a fairly large region, um, north of Toronto, of course, up and through the Muskokas. And um, we have uh, uh, approximately 1,100 personnel, civilian and sworn, that work throughout the area. And um, the purpose of regional command is really to provide support to our detachments uh, within the region. We have 14 now with uh, Orangeville coming on side. And we have detachment commands at each location, of course. Uh, you're, you're certainly familiar with Dufferin uh, OPP. And our role here is to support those locations as best we can um, with, uh, with resources and with uh, administrative support uh, in various other ways. So um, that's really, I, I just wanted to bring that to the equation. Uh, I have been uh, with the OPP for 31 years. Um, and uh, I started uh, in West Region, and I've been with Field Command uh, most of those 31 years. Um, I went out for, a, uh, I was the Chief Firearms Officer for the uh, province uh, for a couple uh, plus years um, under IOC Command, which is our, our um, um, uh, not Field Command, it's investigations and criminal organizations. So, uh, I was over there for a little period of time, but I'm really happy to be uh, back in Central and uh, we've got a great uh, crew of officers, some excellent detachment commanders and personnel uh, providing service throughout the region. Um, so I, I would look at uh, perhaps getting some time at a future date on your agenda um, just to have some further discussions and uh, and perhaps uh, you know bring a bring a presentation as far as a delegation, um, just uh, any opportunity to explain uh, the value of our service and um, answer any questions as well that you may have. Very good. Any questions for the chief superintendent? Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we're just have a little housekeeping to clean up and then uh, 
we're going to be finished one hour meeting. So uh, if uh, you don't have anything else uh, for him, then we'll move on. Okay, uh, under correspondence, we did receive correspondence from uh, uh, the OPP with respect to a promotion board that's going to be taking place on December 8th. And I circulated to the board members a request to identify if any of them uh, wish to to uh, be the one person from the uh, town of Mono to uh, represent us on that board. Uh, did either of you uh, wish to step up for that, or uh, what's your what's your feelings? I, I I was thinking of you, Mike. Actually, with uh, your background and experience, and uh, I mean, I've done lots of interviews over the years in terms of boards of that nature, but uh, I think your background is uh, much more qualified than mine. So I would defer to you, Mike, as well. I don't think I'm very good to pick Nikki, but uh, kidding, Nikki. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'll uh, communicate that uh, decision back to the uh, the uh, superintendent. Um, the next new business is the appointment of a chair for 2021. I believe, uh, um, is there any nominations for the role of chair for next year? I nominate you, Mike. <laughs> I second that. Okay, is it <laughs> second, John? And all in favor? Okay, thank you. Um, next business is our meetings for 2021. Um, I've looked at the calendars and the dates that look favorable are February 17th, June 16th, September 15th, and November 17th, God willing and COVID willing. Um, any uh, issues with any of those dates, uh, folks? No, no, not for me. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. Okay for that. Okay, a motion to uh, publish those four dates as our uh, meeting dates for next year. Uh, Evans, all in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, any other new business? John? Uh, just to, to revisit an issue that, that has come up in the past and that is uh, uh, automate, automated speed enforcement. Uh, I am not letting that issue drop insofar as petitioning the province to allow it in more than simply community safety zones as well as uh, in uh, areas where the speed limit is uh, uh, 80 kilometers per hour. Um, those are the two limitations that has confined the technology essentially to downtown Toronto. And uh, I don't think it's right. And I think that we should at least have the option of considering the use of that technology uh, and not be prohibited from doing so because of uh, uh, bureaucratic uh, uh, conditions. I don't know whether the OPP has, uh, has uh, quietly lobbied the province on this, but again, they seem to regard this uh, as some kind of uh, cash grab uh, slash tax increase, um, when in reality the the conditions discriminate against its rollout in rural Ontario. Okay, we want to ask you to make any political uh, responses to that, uh, uniform staff. But uh, I, I concur with you completely, uh, Deputy Mayor, that. Uh, this is something that needs to be pushed forward. Any other new business? Okay. Uh, Staff Sergeant uh, McLaughlin, do you have any uh, comments, questions on your first mono meeting? No, it's excellent. Uh, certainly, again, as I echo, uh, just finding the ropes here with the OPP and uh, happy to help any way I can. And, and certainly uh, looking forward to any work with Staff Sergeant Randall, Inspector Randall, and and learning the OPP ways here. So very much, very similar problems and, and certainly uh, uh, some good challenges as well at the same time. So uh, happy and, and certainly uh, my information we pass around as well. If anything, I can do to help, uh, certainly well. Very good. Any other comments, folks? Okay, I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at uh, 1.55. Yeah, motion. 
I'll close the post here. Okay, our next meeting is February 17th, 2021 at one o'clock. Uh, probably will be held virtually. Um, who knows? Uh, I have a motion to confirm the proceedings of the meeting of the Mono Police Services Board held on Wednesday, November the 18th. Uh, we have Evans and Creelman, all in favor, opposed, carried. Thank you folks for uh, our last meeting of the year. Thanks Shay for uh, doing another great job on the, uh, the minutes, et cetera. And uh, uh, wish you all a safe and healthy rest of the year. Let's get through this and we'll, we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. All the best, everyone. Take care.